Hello new player, I'm Fuzzy Bond. Here, you will find everything you need to raise your flag and roam Sea of Thieves. I have created many beginner guides on my YouTube channel, but for this one, I've compiled essential information to help you get started in one directory. It is also in the form of chapters for ease of access. If you have any questions, you can follow me on my Twitch, where I stream every Sunday, Tuesday and Thursday. Link in the description below. I always read the chat and I'm ready to answer your questions when I'm live. This will be a spoiler-free video. I'll tell you what to expect as a new player, but the experience is for you to appreciate, so make sure to watch until the end. Fuzzy here, bringing you honest guides and gameplays, so sit back, relax and enjoy. You have launched the game for the first time and greeted with a pirate selection intro. Feel free to take your time, as after you choose your pirate, you cannot change the way it looks unless you pay real coins, so choose wisely. Notice at the bottom of the menu, you can choose new pirates if you don't like the current selection. When generating new pirates, the favored ones will stay, so if one is a candidate, add it to the favorites list. You can later customize everything else from accessories, hairstyles, face paint, clothing and much more through earning in-game gold and buying cosmetics from the shops. When you are done, select your qualifying pirate and be ready for your first adventure. The Maiden Voyage This is your basic tutorial and introduction to the Sea of Thieves. You'll be greeted with new player menu. Now, this Maiden Voyage banner will disappear after you complete the onboarding quest and will give you the option to set sail in the main world and encounter other players. I will guide you on how it works, but as mentioned before, spoiler free. You will wake up on a remote island at the edge of Sea of Thieves map and be greeted with the Pirate Lord. Follow his prompts, as Sea of Thieves is unlike other games. This onboarding quest is actually useful and rewarding. Once you're in good health, we'll speak properly. Once you are done with initial steps and he tells you, feel free to look around, come back when ready. There. You look better already. That's where you need to stop, as there is a hidden vault on that island that you can find and get good coins from. Press tab on PC or the start button on Xbox controller to open your player menu. You'll find your resources, equipment, reputation and quests. Head over to Reputation, open the Tall Tales section and then search for the Maiden Voyage. We will get to these other tabs later in the video. Here you will find commendations for things you can do on this island before you leave. Once completed you will be rewarded with a nice amount of gold, cosmetics and doubloons, a currency used in the game's black market. When done you will set sail out of the Maiden Voyage into the Sea of Thieves and then will face a loading screen that will take you to the main world. Remember, you can always return to the Maiden Voyage from the bottom right corner of the menu. Now, this is an outpost. There are several of these scattered around the map, and you are in the tavern. It's like the market or the central hub and usually can be spotted from a distance as they are the most lit islands on the map. Around the outpost, you will find barrels. These are where you can collect supplies and resources from planks, different types of cannon ammunition and a variety of fruits. You can also find shops, each represents the icon above. If lost, you can use the post signs on the outpost. Each shop will have a chest in front of it for you to equip your purchased or earned cosmetics. The same ones will be found on each ship. After following the prompts, you will have to set sail. Find a chest and bring it back to sell at the gold hoarders. It's the guy who loves money, but ironically the only one living in a tent. When looking for the island on the map, some players get confused as everything looks unfamiliar. But don't worry, the first island is generally very close to the outpost you are on, so don't go too far looking for it. Similar to what you've experienced in the Maiden Voyage, you should know how to raise anchor, repair your ship and sail around. The anchor is only two options, raise and drop. A wheel is for directing your ship. It will make a thud sound when it is centered, which means your boat is sailing in a straight line. To help identify it, the center handle is always unique from the rest. Sails. This is where you control your ship's speed for raising and dropping the sails and the other is for angling them left and right. For angling, you'll see wind trails, and that's the direction of the wind. Use it as a reference to angle your sails to full bellow. Of course, at certain times you'll be sailing against the wind, so in that situation angle as far as the beam reach. On the first tutorial, prompts will tell you to drop anchor upon reaching the island, 
Do that just to get rid of the prompt, but the right way to do it is to raise sails all the way to full stop. Unless there is a storm, never drop anchor when parking, and always stay parallel to the island. If for some reason your ship sinks or you end up very far from it, a mermaid will spawn with green smoke. When you approach that, it will send you back to your ship, and the further you are, the faster it spawns. So, if you fall off your ship while sailing, swim in the opposite direction to get it sooner. Finding the chest, there is an X marks a spot on the map. Use island landmarks as a reference. Once digging the chest and taking it back to your ship, head to the outpost that you came from. Once you sell it to Scrooge, the game will leave you alone. It will display a few things at the bottom about other factions and outposts. You will find other things in the game like treasure chests containing items, gold and gems, scattered around islands, barrels of plenty which are located under the small flock of birds, or shipwrecks located under the larger flock of seagulls. Keep an eye on these, you can find good things. You can sell the empty treasure chests and the gems to any faction of your choice to gain their reputation level. Currently, there are 7 factions in the game, 4 located at the outpost. Gold Hoarders, where you sell valuable shinies, always located in a tent. Order of Souls, where you fight skeletons and sell their skulls to the ladies, located under the Pirate Emporium, where you spend real coins. Merchant, always by the dock, is where you collect voyages like capturing animals and delivering cargo. Athena's Fortune, this is where you sell Athena-related items. But that is not accessible until you reach Pirate Legend status, which is level 50 in at least 3 of the main factions. Athena's Fortune will be another video. The last 3 factions are not located here. You cannot purchase voyages from. One is the Sea Dogs, which is another game mode accessible from the main menu that focuses on naval battles and player versus player interactions. Everything is based on commendations found under the reputation tabs mentioned earlier. But before we move on, one more. Thing. Each faction has its reputation tab, which will contain your level, commendations and emissary status. You will find the Bilge Rats tab, which is dedicated to monthly game updates and events. The representative is always hanging around the tavern. Every faction has a table so you can represent them while making that voyage. But to vote for the flag, you need to make a one-time purchase from its corresponding faction. Since this is a more complicated subject, you will find a complete video about it in the description below. Hunter's Call can be found located at sea posts. This is where you sell fish, cooked meat and sometimes treacherous plunder. The sea trash you get while fishing. Reaper's Bones, only located at Reaper's Hideout. They are more of a rebellious faction and just like Hunter's Call, everything related to them is under the Commendations tab. This is where you sell everything in the game. They are like the junk dealers of the sea, but mainly focus on buying items like the Bounty Reaper chests under shiny beacons and skulls. Now that we highlighted the basics of sailing, outposts, factions and the world around you, there is one more thing we need to notice, world events. These are the signs in the sky in the form of clouds and angry old men. Currently there are five. First, skull forts, skull cloud in the sky. You fight waves of skeletons until you meet the final boss who will drop a key to the vault, which contains a nice amount of treasure. It only spawns over forts. Two. Flame Heart's Fleet, a trash-talking hologram that makes fun of your pirate and ship. After defeating his fleet, you will get ancestral treasure that looks like you ate the wrong mushroom. This is where you can find the Captain's Skull of the Damned. 3. Fort of the Damned, like the Skull Fort, but this one always has red eyes and the only one that spawns over the Fort of the Damned. Usually, the most active spot on the server, populated with PvP sweat lords. It's a harder version of the normal Skull Fort with higher tier treasure, and the only event that is player activated through acquiring Flames of Fate. More about that in the top right corner. Ashen Winds, a fiery red storm, contains one of the strongest bosses in the game. After defeating them, they will drop some treasure and the Ashen Winds. Skull, a flamethrower skull. Skeleton Fleets, a fleet of skeleton ships that you might sometimes find randomly roaming around the map. You will fight three waves of ships and when defeating the final captain, you will get a healthy amount of treasure. Speaking of skeleton fleets, these are also randomly roaming around the seas. They are a part of the three world threats. One, skeleton ships. They come in the form of sloops and galleons and only attack you if you attack first. Unless they emerge from under the seas, then for some reason, you have pissed them off. Megalodon, the legendary shark that will attack your ship and drop megalodon meat and treasure when defeated. 
Kraken only spawns when none of the natural world events are active, starts by spreading his ink around your ship to slow you down, then starts slapping and wrapping, and the difficulty of all AI threats are related to the ship size you're on. The bigger the ship, the harder they are. All these events might seem overwhelming for a new player, but they are not, once you understand their behavior and attack patterns. Tall Tales, it's more like Goonies meets Indiana Jones in Sea of Thieves. This was the very first tab I mentioned back in the Maiden Voyage, a Sea of Thieves story mode and beautiful experience. I recommend you complete these in the right order for the best experience. Get your close friend or someone you watch Netflix with, even if it's your dog, let's say his name is Milo. You can get one from the Pirate Emporium, name him Milo, spoil the heck out of him, and venture in the Tall Tales together. Pets are purely cosmetics. The only things they do is dance and be on your ship. Last but not least, as a veteran player in the seas, in the span of two years, I have created a Discord community of more than 7,000 pirates, all ready to help you set sail. You are welcome to join. And if you found this video helpful, please help me make this number better. Based on analytics, 65 of regulars that watch my channel are not subscribed. Yep, that is more than half. So your sub will be greatly appreciated. The description below will contain several links and useful resources to help you further increase your piracy. You can start with a poor sailor's guide to solo sloping. Fuzzy here, thank you for watching and happy sailing.